I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to modify a reference table, a table that provides values for a list of values. It's for the dominant breed, and we have used it in reports and forms. The first thing that we'll do is change the width of a column, mainly to highlight that when you have a column created through a tool such as Create Lookup Table, the default column width is 4,000 characters. We're going to add another column to this table for animal category because with that added, we can create a pair of LOVs that operate together where if you select a animal category such as canine, then in the next LOV, you only see the canine breeds. We'll add a uniqueness constraint for two columns together and we'll create a form with report to support data entry and maintenance for this particular reference table. And we will also enforce consistent case, upper or lower case, for data entry by adding a computation to a page item. We've done that before, but we'll repeat that process here. So the first thing I'm going to do is call up the data model just to remind you what the dominant breed lookup table looks like right now. So this is a PDF of the data dictionary that I imported using SQL Developer. I want to zoom in a little bit. My main interest this time around is for dominant breed, which currently has a surrogate key a system generated ID, unique ID for each record in this table. That's DOM breed ID. And it has dominant breed. I want to add a third column for animal category. So I'm going to log into Apex as the developer. So I'm logged into Apex as the developer, Carlo Mora. I'm going to go to SQL Workshop and go to Object Browser. If I look at Dominant Breed Lookup right now, there are two columns. The surrogate key, 
DOM breed ID system generated is a number field or number data type and the DOM breed is VARCAR2 and it's got a width of 4000. I want to modify that column just to show you how you can do this. I want to select DOM breed and then set the length for something like 60. We don't need 4000. Now I want to add a column and I'm going to call this animal underscore category. I'm doing animal in front simply because we have another field in another table called category so I want to make sure that they're distinctly different if we see them side by side. And this will be VARCAR2 and the length, uh, let's make it 15 and click Next. By the way, I do eventually want to set this so that it is a required field, but I don't want to do that right now because I already have data in this table and this field would be blank. So I would get an error message. So we'll come back to that later. So I'll click Next and Finish. Now if I look at constraints as they are right now, I have a uniqueness constraint on this single field DOM breed. Because I'm adding an animal category and I want to add a uniqueness constraint on dominant breed with that category field, I want to get rid of this particular uniqueness constraint. So make sure you notice the name and then do a drop and select the name that you want to drop and click Finish. So now we have a constraint that says the primary key field, the surrogate key, cannot be null and the field dominant breed cannot be null. If we look at the data that, as it exists in the table right now, we see the dominant breed and the column animal category is blank. If I step through and look at all of these, all of these are canines right now. So I'm going to go over to SQL commands and I'm going to add canine to the animal category. Update DOM breed lookup set animal category equal to and then in single quotes I have put capital C A N I N E. Let's run that. 24 rows updated. Come back to object browser in the DOM breed lookup, look at the data, and we see canine. So let's add a constraint. Uh, one constraint is I modified the name on this constraint. It's a check constraint. It's on animal category, and now that we've populated that, I want to make sure that we always add an animal category when we add a breed. So the constraint expression is not null. So I've created that. I want to add another constraint. This one will be a uniqueness constraint. And notice I can have more than one column involved. I want two. I want to take dominant breed and animal category and make sure that I can't ever put in something like canine and bulldog more than once in this table. So I'll click Next and Finish. So we have added the required data entry for animal category and a uniqueness constraint for the combined columns of breed and category. So looking at the data, the other issue I need to deal with is, as we've seen in past videos, Oracle's going to treat upper and lowercase letters differently. A capital A is not the same as a lowercase a. So I'm going to convert all of these for the category to uppercase and I will do the same for dominant breed and I'll do that using the SQL command interface and I will pause the video and type in one of these. So the command is update the table DOM breed lookup 
set DOM breed equal to, and then using the upper function, convert all the characters to uppercase. So I will run that. And it says 24 rows updated. Now I'm going to convert this code to deal with category. So I've set animal underscore category equal to the animal category within the upper function. And I run that. I will come to Object Browser just to confirm by selecting that table and looking at the data. And everything is in caps. I'm going to go to Application Builder. And when I open the application, I want to go into Shared Components and continue cleaning up what I've been doing. List the values in animal category. This is a static LOV. I just got through converting everything that's stored into capital letters, so I should edit this to make that consistent so that we see caps for canine, feline, reptile, and so forth. I will pause the video while I make that change. You will need to click edit here. So I've made those changes and saved them. We're going to see mixed case when we look at the drop-down list. But whatever we select, the capitalized version of it is what will be stored. So apply those changes. It comes to mind that I should probably take a look at the data that's already in the animals table. So let's come back to SQL Workshop, Object Browser, look at animals, and look at the data. And we're seeing category animal category as mixed case. So I'll come again to the SQL commands and switch all of that to uppercase. So we'll set the category column data already in there to the uppercase version of the data already in there. So run that command. Then over in object browser in animals look to verify that you have uppercase. Now I'm going to come to the application itself and run that application. Right now I have a maintenance form with a report, but it does not include the category column that we have added. I am going to drop page 16 and the form that's on page 17 I could modify these. We've done that in previous videos when we changed uh, the data structure by dropping or adding a column. But this time around, I'm simply going to remove these two pages and then have Apex regenerate those. So I will I'll go back to the report and see that I'm on page 16. Your page number may be different. But I will delete this page. And then I will select page 17. And I will delete that page. Then I will add a page. It will be a form with report. And whatever number, it may vary from what you see here. I'll name the report page and the form page. So name the report, name the form, click Next. I will not create a navigation item because I will reuse the existing navigation item. I will select dominant breed, and I see my three columns. I'll set my primary key or identify the primary key. And if I run this right now, then I see my report, and I can edit and go to the form. But this menu item does not open that report, which is page 25. So I will go to the application. Shared Components, Navigation Menu, and I want to take this report menu item and change what page it opens. I want it to open this report. Apply that change, go to my application, run it, and I now have my menu item picking up the newly created report and form. So I'm going to select one of these. It doesn't matter which one. And I want to edit the layout here. So I'll edit the page. First off, I, wanna I want to display the primary key. So I'll make that as display only. And then for dominant breed, start new row, no. 
Animal Category, Start New Row, No. Save that and run that. Oh, I always forget I need to add the label. So for Dominant Breed for the primary key, I need to do Dom Breed ID and save that. So from the report, if I want to create a record, so before I add a record, I actually I want category, which would logically come first, have it listed before dominant breed. So I'll come back and edit my page. And where we have dominant breed as sequence 20, I want animal category. Let's just make that 18. Automatically moves it in front of dominant breed. So let's say I want to do feline calico and create that. I want to come back in here and we're testing what we have done earlier. I'm doing feline and calico and create that. And because of the uniqueness constraint for these two, the pair of fields, I cannot do that. Unfortunately, however, if I type in calico in lowercase, I can create that. Capital letters, lowercase letters are not the same. So to prevent that from happening, I will edit. I need to first go back into that form and edit the page. And for animal category, we'll handle the upper lowercase by having a select list and having it select from shared components the animal category and save that change. That'll take care of uppercase for animal category. For dominant breed, I'll do a right click and I will create a computation. For the execution options, this will be after submit. Let me scroll down a little bit so you can see that. After submit, it will be an SQL expression, upper, and then the page item. And actually, I think I need a colon in front of that. That gets rid of the warning. So I'll save that run this. I'll select feline and I'll type in lowercase calico and create that. And now that is not accepted because calico is converted to uppercase and that conflicts with an existing record. I'm going to add some animal categories and breeds and pause the video while I do that. So I've added several records. Uh, let's take a look at feline. So I have calico feline. Now I still have the one where I stored the data in lowercase. So I can edit this and delete this one. And now I have feline calico, feline Persian, feline Russian blue, feline Siamese, feline Burman, feline parrot. What? Just to remind you that all the things we're doing help prevent error, but humans can still make errors. I don't think we have a parrot that's a feline, so I need to edit that and delete that. And if you want to create these so that you have the same data I have, you can do that. I've also added reptile, but I need to get rid of the filter on feline. So I added Komodo dragon as reptile. And then I added bird. I've got parrot, cockatoo, and goldfinch. So in the next video, we'll do cascading LOVs, where selection in one LOV determines what's shown in the second LOV. See you in the next video.